Chapter 10 You! I couldn't help but keep the slight tone of anger in my voice. He raised his hand slightly in a calming gesture. I am sorry, I really am. When I found you in such a bad way, I just assumed you were like many of the others I'd seen. His face fell. Too late for me to save. But if I'd known you'd have been in the tower... He trailed off, his expression becoming conflicted in thought. What? I said, calmer now, knowing what had happened back then wasn't his fault. After all, how could he have known? If I'd known you'd have been in the tower, then I would have saved you. But... He paused in thought. That would have meant leaving it intact. And I couldn't do that. His voice took on a harder edge, and as he finished speaking, he kicked at a piece of rubble lying on the ground, sending it flying past me and skittering across the cobbles. Ah! That's just a problem with this bloody war. If I'd have helped you, then more could have died. But what I did do may have cost you your life. I took a step towards him. Holding my hand out, not quite sure what to do, but wanting to know that he's comforted now. But it didn't cost me my life. And I'm sure your reasons for destroying the tower, whatever they were, were justified. The doctor glanced over towards the fallen bell. It was part of a weapon, he said flatly. I stared at him a moment, then at the bell, then back at him. But, I began, hesitantly, it's always been here. For as long as anyone can remember. We used to ring it in the summer. The sun bell, we called it. The doctor looked at me with a puzzled expression. Sun bell? Then a look of realisation dawned on his face as he scrambled over to the bell and started pulling away at the rubble from its edge. I then saw the familiar design on its side. You mean this? He was pointing at a round symbol, its surface embossed with cracks and around its edge many wavy lines emanated from it, as if rays of sunlight. Yeah, when the first settlers came across it, it was on a simple structure in the town centre. Then as the town grew, they decided to construct a proper tower for it. Eventually, as well as for warning the townspeople against any danger, it became part of the first summer sun ceremony, which seemed appropriate given that sun symbol that was on it. The doctor sighed. I'm sorry to say that's not a sun. It's a Leogar. Although in these parts you might know them better by the name... Animus. I almost burst out laughing. The Animus? That's just a spook story told to thieves. I put in a cackly old lady voice. If you steal any gold from the mines, the Animus will come after you. The doctor looked at me gravely. Oh, believe me, the Animus is very real. I encountered it many years ago. Several times, in fact. On Zabi? I questioned him, remembering the old stories. He chuckled to himself. Not quite. The Zabi were those who inhabited the same planet as the Animus. The planet itself was called Vortis. But now the Animus and its carcinome are long since gone. Just another casualty of this war. As he spoke, my derisive smile faded. Having done my service in the mines myself, the Animus was regarded as nothing more than a tall tale, but one which seemed to keep people in line. And now here I was finding out that it was real? A piece of rubble falling onto the bell, making it strike out loud gong sounds, snapped me back to reality. So, how was that? A weapon? I said, pointing at the half-buried bell. Not a weapon. Part of a weapon. The doctor said emphatically. What your ancestors perceived as the simple structure of a bell was actually a beacon of the Animus. They used to be dotted about all across the Isop galaxy, back when the Animus inhabited Vortis. The Daleks thought they could use the beacons to channel the power of the Animus for their own means. Could they have done it? I questioned. Possibly, he replied. The Animus was one of the great old ones, beings that existed before the universe began. They possessed powers untold, and if those powers could be harnessed, then it would have made the Daleks unstoppable. I stood open mouthed for a moment pre-universe. The existence of things before the beginning of existence? I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. I suddenly felt like such a small part of the universe, and after everything I'd been through, it suddenly seemed so trivial in comparison. I shivered slightly, pushing the thoughts to the back of my head. So you decided to preemptively strike to stop that from happening? The doctor nodded slightly. In a way, some friends of mine, well, I say friends, more acquaintances, they helped me become who I am, and then to help me find my way, they pointed me in the direction of Isop, 
knowing that I'd find the Daleks here. He looked up into the sky. Long time ago now. I wonder how a healer is these days. After a moment's pause, realising I was still looking at him, he drew his eyes back down and cleared his throat. <clears throat> anyway, as I said, the Animus has long since gone. He turned around and began to walk off past the rubble, once more scanning around with his device. Did you kill it? I said, following him. I was slightly surprised by my own bluntness, but after everything I'd just learned, it didn't seem like there was much that could shock me anymore. No. He replied. If I'm perfectly honest, I'm not sure what happened. Some say it was just another piece of collateral damage in the war. Others that maybe it did survive. Wouldn't be the first time, after all. Aha! He exclaimed, holding up his device, peering over the rubble. With a slight smile, he scrambled up over onto the other side. I followed him, slipping and tripping once or twice, and found him squatting down by a patch of dense grass, brushing it away with his hands. Hello again, he said, with a wiry smile. I believe you two have met. He gestured for me to come over. As I walked towards him, I saw the familiar black cone. It was attached to a metal rod, on which there were remains of several semi-transparent discs. And as the doctor brushed away more of the grass, I saw a tarnished but familiar bronze panelling of a Dalek dome. Looking around and getting my bearings, I realised this wasn't just any Dalek dome. This was THE Dalek dome that I would pleaded with all those years ago. The Dalek that almost killed me. The Dalek that he saved me from. Noticing I stopped where I stood, the doctor gestured to me to come closer. It's all right, it's quite safe. This is just the dome. He rapped on it with his knuckles, giving a slight chuckle. Nobody home. I slowly walked forward, still half expecting it to suddenly come back to life, but also looking carefully around before thinking out loud. Where's the rest of it? The doctor raised a finger pointedly in the air without taking his eyes off the dome. That is exactly why we are here. Like I told you, Dalek remains have been disappearing. Not all of them, it would seem, but I'd still like to find out why. He pointed his device at the dome and slowly, one by one, several small screws came out of the plates. Then getting his fingers underneath with some force, he managed to prise it up, repeating the process again and again two more times. What are you doing? I asked. Proving a theory. He replied with a degree of triumph. If the Dalek remains are disappearing, then they're being transported somehow. And going by the readings I picked up in the TARDIS when we landed, I think we'll soon find out how. Standing up, he pointed his device at the Dalek Dome, and after a brief moment, the light at the end began to flick red. What did you just do? I said, slightly worried. He beamed like a child with a new toy. Call for reinforcements. And something tells me we won't have to wait very long. The shot missed us by inches as the doctor pulled me to the ground and we half called, half scrambled behind a low wall as the familiar hum of movement reached our ears. Surrender or be exterminated. 